Hello everybody, this is Maniac 4 Bricks, and I'm here today with a collectathon video. This is where I go over a LEGO theme or a wave from a LEGO theme and talk about what I've collected up to this point, what I think about the sets and how they work with each other, what I like and dislike from them, and see if I want to collect any more from this theme. Now this one's actually a weird example for today because we're talking about LEGO Kuso, also known as LEGO Ideas. And this one doesn't really have a central theme except for the idea that these are all crowdfunded sourcing um, of different fan projects and then designed a little bit to tweak it a bit into an official LEGO set. And they all have different purposes to each of their builds, whether it's a smaller scale or large scale, whether it's emulating real life or fantasy, whether it's based on an intellectual property or an original design, or if it's meant for play versus display. So I think LEGO Ideas and on the whole, even with all 31 sets that have now been unveiled and released, including the Pirates of Barracuda Bay set, they're all fantastic. They all have different pluses and minuses to them, but I'd still like to try to rank them as best as I can. Now up to this point, I've experienced 13 of the 31 sets, including the Gift With Purchase Rocket Ride. Now, the 13th one on my list is Voltron, and I can't fairly judge this one because I haven't built the entire thing. I was able to build this along with someone, but I've only built four out of five of the parts for that set. I didn't get to build the entire torso for Voltron, the sword and the shield, but I did build the arms and legs that are traditionally their own vehicles. I thought it was impressive for how they went together and how they were able to snap into place when transformed. And as the whole model, it was fun to hold in hand, but I don't own it personally, so I don't think it's fair for me to count this that much in the list. Otherwise, it might actually rank pretty high just on the authenticity alone. Number 12 that I have, uh, I used to have, I should say, is the Big Bang Theory. Now this one I have reviewed on my YouTube channel before, so if you want to check that out, look for Maniac 4 Bricks Big Bang Theory Review. I've also done a time lapse for it where I tried to play with the theme song in a way, but this one kind of fell out of interest for me as a TV show and the Lego set. I liked it at the time and it was cool to build it and get to see an apartment style that hasn't really been replicated in Lego for and form before, but it wasn't really something I held on to for that long. I didn't have the minifigures anymore, I don't have all the pieces to rebuild it, I somehow still have the square bound instructions, I don't know why, and I only have like a handful of pieces left just for building on my own. So it's nothing that I really can fairly judge, especially after a while since I last reviewed it, to rank it in this list. Number 11 kind of hurts, but it's a bittersweet kind of hurt. Wally. I used to have the Wally set, and it was a fantastic build. I am a bit biased with it though, because it is my favorite Pixar movie of all time, so of course I was happy that it was created and that I was able to own it in hand. However, it kind of sat around for a while, not even in a display form, and I couldn't help but send it along to my friend Greg, aka Brickitect, in order to make better use of him. I thought it was great for its time, and I think there's still a lot of cool functions for how he can move, but I knew that Greg was looking for this set for a very long time, and I wanted to try to uh, help him out by finding it less than the going black market price, which is pretty extreme. Maybe someday I'll build it again, or build something like it, and still be able to enjoy that model, but for now, it was a fun memory and a fun experience. And so with that, we go down to my top 10 LEGO Ideas sets. One of them isn't on frame right now, but I'll explain that when I get to that particular set. Number 10 is the LEGO Ideas Maze. I'm ranking this one far down, even though it's one of the most highly anticipated. I've been waiting a long time to get this set, but I'm ranking it this low because it's not complete. I got this one used a couple months back, 
and it didn't have the instructions with it. It did have the box and has most of the pieces, but I haven't been able to fix it up. It was actually sent in box like that, and that meant a couple pieces were falling off of it, so I don't know what's missing exactly from it. I need to take it apart again, rebuild it, and hopefully I'll get to enjoy it the way I imagine it. I really, really was looking forward to this set, and I was very bummed when it was discontinued because I didn't get a, too much of a chance for it, and it was kind of hard to find for a while on the black market. But I was lucky to find it at a reasonable price, even though some things are incomplete. So hopefully this one in the future will rank a bit higher once I get to build the thing more properly. Number 9 is the one that's missing from this whole menagerie. That's the Women of NASA set. I still own the set. The Women of NASA are currently in the cosmos of the Lego room, as I like to refer to it. And uh, it's a very nice set. It's a very cool build for each of the satellite and the space shuttle. I like the figures. They're very authentic and unique prints for each of them, including their nameplates. But that's just about it. They're just here for display purposes. Even the stand that makes up most of them is just there for showing off. I really would have liked if there was more interactivity with this, something that they could have been played on, but outside of the figures, I don't really know much. Uh, I don't really think much of this set compared to the other ones. Number eight is actually a pretty close one to this. We have the Research Institute. This one actually improves on the idea, even though it came out first, because this is a set with a bunch of scientists and little scenes of each of their studies, but they're actually able to play with each other. There are actually ways to interact with them in between. You can actually use the chemist with the stand. You can use the uh, ast astronomist with the telescope. There are some really cool building techniques in here, and I like the T-Rex that's built in here for semi-minifigure scale, but probably a little bit off, but still a really impressive build for all those pieces. And the reason why I like this one a little bit more is because it's a little more open air. You can use this one in just about any LEGO scenery and make it a part of it. You can add it in like it's a museum exhibit or a science class. And I think it works very well for that. Even though it has a lot of reused printed pieces, it doesn't make it as unique. It, the most unique parts you're going to find for it for print are going to be on the chemist. But I digress. I also am a little partial to this one because it was originally a $20 retail set that I got for $1 at Toys R Us. I actually did a video about it if you wanted to see that. It's like 98 cents, but yeah, about a dollar. So I thought that was very good for the price, as far as value goes. Number seven on my list, we have the Exosuit. This one is very impressive. And my thoughts may have changed over time about this one, but it's really good to look at, but it's very hard to play with. It has a lot of ball joints and a lot of moving parts to it, and it's got a really good mechanical look. Even compared to the original prototype model, it captures it pretty well. However, it's not the easiest thing to move around and pose with in different directions. I've actually had trouble standing it up just for this video, and I'm surprised it's been standing up very well for so long already. It also has a lot of small pieces, which is good for the look of it and getting the sci-fi mechanisms to it, but they're also easy to fall off as well. I've had some of the binocular pieces on the feet fall off because it's kind of a loose connection on them. The antenna is easy to fall out depending on where you're putting it. And I'm just held back a little bit by that. I've even had the cockpit, almost entirely the assembly, pop off in, uh, in trying to use it. So it's nice as an idea. It definitely stands out from everything else in here as far as rebling and texture goes. But it's not the best when it comes to a play value either. Number six on my list is the ship in a bottle. And some of you might have seen the stream where I was building this thing, and you might think, oh, it's got to be about the poor. Well, that's one of the reasons. The poor uh, that I'm referring to is pouring all of the one by one trans light blue bricks, uh, plates rather, into the bottle itself before it's closed up. 
And if you wanted to be accurate with this, it's very difficult to get it down. First of all, you have the manner of you're going to have some of the extras added into each of those bags. So if you want to count them, that's going to be tedious. I decided to just put the whole bag in. But I wanted to do it in the fun way they showed in the instructions, where you actually cup your hand with full of those plates and tilt it in. I'll tell you, every one bag at a time, because they give you two bags full of those, is very, very difficult to try to make that happen. They do not they do not want to stay in my hand very well. Maybe it's because of the size of my hand, maybe it's the number of plates, whatever the case may be. It took me several tries to actually try to pour all of those in there. Although I will give it some credit that it is a very impressive build for the boat. I thought it was a lot smaller, but it actually has some good, uh, good uh, shaping to it. Some good building textures and um, it a couple clever things towards the middle of it. I also do like that it's added on a plate so you don't have to worry about it falling over. And I also do like the way that the bottom was built to actually help with creating the bottle look, as well as just capping off the bottom of it. I also do like the base. It had an interesting way of flipping everything around so it's very symmetrical and smooth. Number five on my list goes to the Flintstones. This one is a pretty cool representation of the Flintstones. I don't mind that they printed on the minifigure heads instead of making a unique mold. That wouldn't have worked very well. It would have been a one-time thing. It's against their policy of trying to make a new element just for ideas. And honestly, it fits pretty well. I don't think there's really a problem with the way they're printed on there and still having the minifigure-esque appearance to them. Yes, the vehicle might be a little oversized, but that goes with every minifigure scaled thing, so I don't mind it as much, and it looks pretty proper for what it's supposed to represent. It was actually a fun build because I used a lot of building techniques and texturing that I didn't really expect out of a model like this. Especially when it came to shaping the sides of the house, the roof, and the chimney. I also do like that on the back of it, it has a little bit more open aired space so that not only can you play inside of there, you can even fold the sides out so you can fit everyone comfortably in different parts of the house. And even though it's only representing the Flintstones house itself, I do like that it still has Barney and I forget the person's name, but you guys will correct me in the comments of course. Um, I do still like that there are four minifigures included in here instead of it just being about Fred and Wilma. Um, and it also does have the little bowling alley, which is something that was iconic for the Flintstones, especially for Fred Flintstone, so it is fun to include the little extra in there. Number four. Man, I'd love to put this higher up on the list, but it pains me to say, number four is Back to the Future DeLorean. I love this so much. This was the first LEGO idea set that I ever picked up. And I was so happy to find one copy left in Toys R Us. Even if it was a little above retail price, it was worth the money because it gave you the ability to build the car very authentically. You, there was a first print of the Marty McFly and Doc Brown minifigures. You got to change the car from Back to the Future Part 1 to Part 2 to Part 3 with a handful of easy pieces. It was so good! It was so remarkable! And it still holds up pretty well. However, I put it at number four, even though I have a lot of bias towards it, because you can't actually fit the minifigures inside of here comfortably. And because of that, it causes some internal problems with the rest of the build. Things that could have easily been fixed with this model with a handful of pieces, and I probably still can fix those, but a handful of pieces could have gone a long way from that initial design. Number one, the minifigures don't fit in there comfortably because you can't actually lean them forward. It's too low profile of a roof to sit them upright and have Doc or Marty driving the car. So they always look like they're leaning back and one leg is never lined up with the other leg because of the plates and tiles that are in there. So it's very awkward having them sit inside of it. Number two. They sit relatively close to each other inside of that car. There's not a proper space for it, even though it's an eight stud wide build. So they're mostly going to overlap each other at some point. Number three, because they're leaning back so much and trying to keep as low profile as possible, 
Doc Brown's hair especially will get in the way of the roof and some of the siding, which means the windows and doors on the sides of it are always going to pop out when you have the minifigures in here. I do still like the dashboard and giving it enough room for that, but only a couple of plates would have just raised that a little bit, wouldn't have changed the look that much, would have made them fit more comfortably and sitting forward, and that would have been it. That would have been just fine. And otherwise, it's a really impressive model from one of my favorite movies of all time. Number three, I'm going to give it to the birds. Now, this is actually a surprising one for me because for a while, I didn't really think much about the bird set before getting it. I thought, yeah, that's a cool idea, but I didn't know if I was really going to want it. And then I remembered, my sister and my mother are fans of birds. We have a whole, as Kevin likes to call it, bird sanctuary at home, where we have different collections of birds in ceramic or plush form. We do a lot of bird watching. We have the parakeet pets in there. And it just felt appropriate for me at one point when I was at a convention, I found it at a pretty good price after it was discontinued, and I decided to pick up the bird set. As soon as I brought it home, my sister wanted to build the whole set. And keep in mind, my sister is six years younger than me, and usually doesn't build with Lego. She used to when she was younger, but nowadays it's just my thing in the house. It's only my thing in the house. Nobody else in the house builds Lego. So for her to want to build that, to get these authentic and artistic looking styles of birds, was really remarkable for me. I didn't expect that, but I was like, go for it. And she built the hummingbird and she built the blue jay. I got to build the robin. What also was uh, interesting about this, even though it's just for display purposes, there's a lot of interesting building techniques put into all three of the birds, and it opened my eyes to something more that LEGO Ideas could be about. It doesn't have to just be an original idea, it doesn't even have to be based off of a license, but it could just be based off of life, and just the way that it's crafted to make it remarkably accurate to something real, to something natural. I thought this was a really good eye-opener for me when having the set in hand, and I still enjoy it. So after this video, it's definitely going back in the bird sanctuary, where it'll be sitting on display with the other birds. Number two is the Ghostbusters Ecto-1. Other than being a very accurate representation of the original Ghostbusters car, with all kinds of greebling and gadgets all over the place, this one solves a problem that the Back to the Future DeLorean should have already resolved. Sitting the minifigures appropriately inside of the car, and more so with some really cool building techniques. I really do like the way the windows are shaped on the side of the car because they're simply made out of panels turned on their side. It creates a little slanted look to them, it creates this little divider between the front and back sections and the trunk. It also has enough room in there that you could fit two minifigures at least, three pretty luckily, um, and you could also fit the proton packs in the back of the car, which is just great for playing around with this thing more than just being a display model. I also do like the little display with them, having all four figures on there. I know that uh, Venkman has had an upgrade through LEGO Dimensions, and he does look a bit better for the hairstyle, but this one isn't too bad either. I think for what was given at the time, this was pretty darn good, and it's still an enjoyable model. It's one of my favorites out of licensed cars that LEGO has ever made. And number one, you probably guessed this one long time ago, is the old fishing store. I love the sea, I love the beach, and the old fishing store captures it in a way that just takes me back and just makes me so happy. It was a long build, but it was a worthy build. It had a lot of unique pieces and building techniques, a lot of intricate details to make it feel like it was very lived in and very thriving. I thought this was a remarkable model, so much so that it's actually a part of my beach town Studside Heights. It's one of the few LEGO sets it's going to take a while for me to replace in there, even though other ones have been slowly moving out and trying to make it more mock customized. This one stands out tr uh, it's, it's so good. It, it has all different kinds of different ways of mini moving minifigures throughout it, all on different sides, a lot of little fish and tackle 
that you could add through there. It's got these little rooms that are easy to separate. It's remarkable. And I, I can't get enough of it. I can't even imagine what it's going to be like when I try to tear this thing apart. It, it's probably just going to be for moving because there would be no reason for me to uh, tear it apart any sooner than that. So there we have it. Those are my top 10, or 13, LEGO Ideas sets. Those are the ones I've collected up to this point and had some experience with. Now we should probably get on to what I don't have. What LEGO Ideas sets would I still want to pick up, whether they're past or present? Well, Pirates of Barracuda Bay is pretty remarkable. It's the only LEGO Ideas set so far that is based on an intellectual property created by LEGO. So it kind of helps me think that maybe they'll open the door to other ones, maybe for classic space or something. And it reminds me of Benny's Spaceship Spaceship Spaceship, which had this retro style and aesthetic, but using modern building techniques and modern elements. So I'm hoping that continues and Pirates of Barracuda Bay is definitely on my watch list. Adventure Time is kind of a cool one, especially for having buildable figures. I do have the minifigures from uh, LEGO Dimensions, but I have to say, probably the best part of that for me personally is Lady Rainicorn. It's a remarkable looking build. I like all the different pieces used throughout there. It's got the color just right. The other ones feel a little flat in comparison, so I'm not sure on that one, but if I can find it at a decent dis uh, discounted price, maybe I'll look into it. Other than that, I'm not really sure. Some of the other ones do look impressive. I definitely do like the prehistoric creatures one. Let's let's get that one out of the way, because I've mentioned before, this is a really cool T-Rex design, but that one, <laughs> that one is really nice to have all together, even if it's, I don't even know if that's more minifigure accurate <laughs> for scale or, uh, or something, but it is really impressive and definitely good for Jurassic Park fans or just fans of prehistoric and, and biological things. I think it's just really remarkable, just all the pieces that go into it and the different building techniques that I can see from it. So that one's on my radar too. Mickey's Steamboat Willie. I want to put this one on the list so much. I really like the look of it. I like the way that the, the chimneys actually um, poof up and down, like they bounce as you roll it. But the only thing that's holding me back from really liking this set is that you, can, you can't actually go inside of it. There's no interior outside of the captain's corners, which is, you know, just where the steering wheel is, of course, recreating the iconic scene. I would have liked if there was a little bit more depth to it, and I'm just waiting for it to go a little bit down in price. It also confuses me because I've seen the misprint for the number in stores, but I've also seen the reprint in stores. And if you're talking at any kind of value between the two, I don't know which one is supposed to be more valuable. I don't know if they're both the equal value, because I've seen many more of the misprint ones than I've seen of the real ones because they printed so many misprints at the first run or the second run, and after that, it was reprinted on the box, so I don't know what to make of it. At least for now, that's all I can think of. I'm sure there's other ones that I like in different ways, but let me know in the comments below what are some of your favorite LEGO Ideas sets, if you agree or disagree with the ones I chose, and in, in maybe in their order. Maybe you can lift your own top 10 LEGO Ideas sets down in the comments below. I recommend try to go off of the ones that you've actually experienced, whether you've built it or played with it in hand or something like that, just to make it a little bit more fair. We'll see you next time with more LEGO videos, and if you'd like to vote on future Collectathon episodes, be sure to check out my Patreon for as little as a dollar per month. You can be part of some early access videos a month before they air on YouTube, and with a little more in the tiers, you'll be able to vote on different videos coming soon. We'll see you next time with more LEGO videos.